today was in its final hours and shoppers were making the most of what's left. I am absolutely gutted, yeah. I should miss it terribly, yeah. All the big stores are closing here now, not just Marks and Spencers, we're losing so many. It's, it, it's worrying. The 68 staff are saying goodbye too, although two thirds are being redeployed. It's a building that we've extended uh, on numerous occasions, so it's a bit of a funny shape. It's got lots of columns, um, which actually makes it really difficult to lay out um, our clothes and therefore really difficult for our customers to shop. Meet the man in charge of M&S's shops and all the closures too. For this particular store, we are seeing declining sales and we're seeing rising costs. And as I said, the building is very old and investing it is really not viable for the future. Closing any store is difficult, he says, but there's no alternative as shopping habits change. It is absolutely essential we do this. I think every retailer has got to consider their property portfolio, but for us, where we've not taken action over a number of years, it's absolutely vital we do this now and we make sure we're responding to uh, the market challenges, but most importantly, responding to what our customers are telling us they want. So they've come here, a half hour drive away to Rushton Lakes, a new out of town shopping centre that's pulling the punters in. It's just gone 10 a.m. and this car park is already packed. They're streaming in. No wonder M&S decided to open up here. Modern, spacious and easy to shop. In Bedford you've got to park, you've got to drive into the motor stores and you've got to park. Um, whereas here, yeah, free parking is much more attractive. It's much bigger, it's much more room and there's a lot more stock. So what now for the Bedford store? It's closing, even though M&S is still liable for another nine years of rent. But this chain is confident it can be sublet and won't sit empty for too long. Emma Simpson, BBC News, Bedford. A man who was given